The peacock and partridge is a fly pattern that's older than dirt, yet still remarkably effective. Using just a few materials, it's easy to tie, and it could represent a whole slew of aquatic insects in various stages of life, anything from a case caddis to a crippled mayfly done. I do prefer to add a couple of modern upgrades, like a fluorescent tag and a slick-looking hook. I'm going to use an Orvis Tactical barbless wide-gap hook in a size 12. A bit large, maybe, but I've also had really good luck with this fly in this size. If you choose to add a tag, load a bobbin with a bright color tying thread. Red is more traditional, but I really like a fluorescent green. In this case, UTC 70 denier. Start your thread on the hook shank, leaving an eye length space behind the eye, and take wraps rearward before snipping or breaking off the tag. Continue taking thread wraps a little ways down into the bend of the hook. The distance between this point and the straight hook shank will determine the length of the tag. If your thread is relatively flat, give your bobbin a clockwise spin to cord it up and produce a more pronounced tag. Make touching wraps of the corded thread up and out of the curve to the flat part of the hook. For the fly's rib, small gold ultra wire fits the bill. A 10 inch length is enough for numerous flies. Lay the wire against the near side of the hook and lightly secure it with two or three wraps before pulling it rearward so its end is where you started your tying thread. Then bind the wire to the near side of the hook with nice tight thread wraps. At the end of the wire, do a five or six turn whip finish and snip or cut your tying thread free. You can now switch over to black tying thread for the remainder of the fly. Here, UTC 70 denier. Start your thread at the original tie-in point and take a few wraps rearward before snipping or breaking off the tag. Peacock curl is used to form the body of the fly. Two or three hurls should do it. About an inch back from their tips, secure the hurls to the near side of the hook and take thread wraps rearward, binding them down all the way to the bend. You can then break or snip the brittle tips off. Leave your thread in this location and start making adjacent wraps up the hook shank with the hurls. Wrapping behind the thread like this will help to keep the hurls pressed together and create a more uniform body. When you reach the initial tie-in point, take two or three turns of tying thread to secure the hurls. You can then break or snip them off close. Get hold of the gold wire and make even open spiral wraps over top of the peacock. By all means, use counter wraps if you like. When you reach the front of the body, secure the wire with two or three tight wraps of tying thread. Then helicopter the wire to break it off close. Select a single natural Hungarian partridge feather from the neck area and pluck it free from the skin. The good, non-fluffy lower fibers should be about as long as the entire hook. Strip off all the fluffy stuff from both sides of the stem and then get hold of the feather by its very tip. Pull the lower fibers down toward the butt end of the stem and hold them there. Snip the tip of the feather off, leaving a small triangle that will act as a tie-in anchor. While still holding the feather in your left hand, use your right hand to give the bobbin a counterclockwise spin. Doing this will coax the tying thread into jumping slightly rearward to catch the anchor and allow you to take thread wraps to secure the feather to the near side of the hook. With hackle pliers, get hold of the butt end of the partridge feather. Raising the stem to vertical, preen and fold the fibers rearward and begin wrapping the stem around the hook shank to form the fly's soft hackle collar. One and a half to two wraps is usually more than enough to get a nice even distribution of fibers encircling the fly. When you reach bare stem, secure it with two or three good firm wraps of tying thread and then with the very tips of your scissors, snip the excess butt end of the stem off as close as possible. Do a four or five turn whip finish and snip or cut your tying thread free. Add a drop of head cement to the thread wraps if you like, making sure the hook eye stays clear. And that's all there is to it. It's interesting how with just a few minor updates, an altogether ancient pattern can look as modern as anything else in your fly box. Mm -hmm.